Hello, if you like this video, please rate, comment, share and subscribe. If you dislike it, please tell me why, so I can improve. And I'll see you now. Right, this is a big science video, so it's going to be about scientific stuff that's at secondary school level on a GCSE syllabus. Now, it could be more flexible about this, but I know that's what people want, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, now I'm going to talk about hormones and ductless glands today. A hormone is a substance that the body produces which has an effect on a tissue that is distant from it. There are hormones, or rather there are substances, which have an effect on a nearby tissue and there are obviously glands that open to the surface, for example the salivary glands, sweat glands, sebaceous glands, mammary glands. And all of these are glands, but there are also glands that release their products directly into the bloodstream and those are the ones I want to consider here. Now I'm going to go through them one by one from bottom to top. That means that the first set of glands I'm going to talk about are obviously a rude set of glands. So let's just get the sniggering over with or whatever and point to the necessary area which is here. Now because I am afflicted with being male I have testes and my testes produce a steroid hormone called testosterone. You have to remember, by the way, that all of this is oversimplified because that's what you have to do to do GCSE biology. You have to oversimplify everything. So that's what I'm doing. Right, now testosterone is responsible for male sexual characteristics such as the large larynx, facial hair, body hair. I'll get closer. Body hair um, and um, male fat distribution as well. And um, also things like that, which I've gone on and on about actually, the uh, ring finger being longer than the forefinger. And some people would say also muscle bulk, although I'm not sure about that because I think probably what happens there is you build, them, you build it up because of social criteria, social pressure actually. Um, now the female equivalents of those are of course the ovaries, which are responsible for the production of estrogen and progesterone, which again are steroid hormones which are very similar to testosterone in a lot of ways. So that's the second lot. Now they obviously are responsible for female fat distribution. Um, progesterone is responsible for the laying down of the endometrial tissue into which the embryo may be implanted. Um, then you get the shedding of the endometrial tissue later on, which is responsible for menstruation and also for growth of mammary glands and that kind of thing, maintenance of pregnancy and progesterone and the like. So that's the second level. The next level up is actually the suprarenal or adrenal glands, which are up here. Now I'm going to get close to you again. The kidneys are there. Can't, I don't know if you're seeing this. The suprarenal glands or the adrenal glands are there. Now, like a lot of other glands, the adrenal glands are actually two glands in one. There are two pairs. There are two, there's a pair of glands. There's the adrenal cortex, cortex being the Latin word for bark, so it's on the outside, the adrenal medulla, and then a zone in between. Now the reason they're called the adrenal glands is because they add to the renal area, they are on top of the kidneys, and they used to be thought of as places for storing urine because they would decompose very quickly in corpses and appear to be full of a yellow fluid. In fact, what they are is responsible first of all for adrenaline, which is the flight or flight fight hormone, and is an amine, a bioactive amine hormone, like some of the others. That is, it's a small molecule with an NH2 group on it. And it's also found as a neurotransmitter, because a lot of hormones, or some hormones, are also neurotransmitters. There's an overlap there. They have a role in the nervous system as well as in the endocrine system. And there's crossover because they are also like the endocrine, like the nervous, nervous, bleh, nervous system, they are actually also um, responsible for responses to the environment and so forth and also they are embryologically originally from the skin surface. So they are epithelial cells as well. Um, so the adrenaline which is secreted by the adrenal medulla, the middle bit of the adrenal, is to do with the flight or fight or flight response, so it does things like dilates pupils, causes sweating, increases heart rate, possibly causes defecation, and generally gets you going, increases blood flow to the muscles, and helps you to run away from the cave bear. 
or run towards something that is really annoying you. So that's the immediate response, although there's a more immediate response in the autonomic nervous system that does a similar thing. A less immediate response is in the adrenal cortex, which is what produces your classic steroid hormones that people take as anti-inflammatories and so forth. And they are about building up your general response to stress. And when I say stress, I'm talking about any kind of stress. So excessive hot, excessive cold, physical stress, emotional stress, infection, as well as fright or flight or whatever. Those, that's another layer. Now I'm going to get closer at this point because I think you need to see my body more closely. So here we are. Now you're going to, my head's going to disappear. Right, next stage up again, you're talking about something that's on more or less the same level as the adrenals but at the front, which is the pancreas, which secretes a number of hormones, the most famous of which is insulin, which is responsible for the absorption of sugar or the release of sugar. If you don't have enough insulin, there'll be a lot of sugar floating around in your blood and you'll be diabetic and you'll also have very low energy because the sugar won't be used inside your cells. It's also responsible for the secretion of a hormone called gastrin, which is also secreted by the stomach and the duodenum. And that hormone has a different effect, which is to do with preparing the body for digestion, increasing the secretion of um, digestive enzymes and the flow of bile from the gallbladder and that kind of thing. And there is a third hormone, and there are some others as well, which is known as glucagon, which basically has the reverse effect of insulin. So it will tend to keep blood, not keep blood, sorry, keep glucose in the bloodstream and the like. So that's that. Okay, next stage up is the thymus. Now the thymus is more of an immune system organ. It wraps around the heart and is generally inactive by adulthood. And it's to do with preparing T cells, which are the fighter cells, for um, attack against infection and so forth. So that's the next one. Okay, next one up again. I'm going to have to sit down for this one because you're getting towards the top. Okay, once again, you have... Uh, how do we do this? Right, the next one up are the parathyroids and the thyroid hormone. Now, the thyroid hormone releases vasoactive amines. Oh, I should have mentioned the uh, insulin is a polypeptide hormone. It's basically a protein, which is why it needs to be injected. It, can't, it would be digested if it was put through the mouth, so you can't take it by mouth. Right, so the thyroid is responsible for vasoactive, uh, not vasoactive, sorry, bioactive amines, again, which basically regulate how fast your body works. And there are a number of them, T2, T3, and T4, and they are all basically unusual um, amino acids. And uh, the more of them you produce, the more, the faster your body works. So you get more, more sweating, faster urination, hair grows faster, peristalsis moves food through, through your system faster, and all that kind of thing. And the less of it you produce, then that's the other way. Underneath those, there are four more glands called the parathyroids. And the parathyroids are to do with phosphate and calcium absorption and release. Calcitonin and parathormone are the two. They antagonize each other. One of them increases the absorption of calcium and phosphate, so it helps build up your bones. The other one tends to take that away. There's a lot of yin and yang stuff involved. Okay, next one up is the pituitary. Now the pituitary is a very important hor uh, not hormone, sorry. Uh, it consists of two halves, the adeno hypothesis and the other half whose name temporarily escapes me. One of which rises up from the um, from the mouth. You can touch it if you do one of the bandhas. Um, you can touch the underside of it, the bit just underneath it. And it, the top half comes down from the hypothalamus part of the brain. Now the front half is mainly responsible for secreting hormones which control the rest of the hormones and it has a feedback system where it's sensitive to the levels of hormones in the rest of your body. And it's sort of a crossover between being a gland and part of the brain. Further up there's a hypothalamus which controls it controls the pituitary itself and actually has hormonal influence on it as well as having its own neurotransmitters. And then the back half is responsible for vasopressin which is antidiuretic hormone, it's the one that stops you from weeing all the time. And also oxytocin which is responsible for the release of milk and also for um, labour and some other things such as it seems to have some sort of social role as well, making people more sociable or something, I'm not quite sure. Finally, you have the pineal gland, 
which is really hard to point to, like the pituitary, because it's in the, near the centre of your head, but it's basically behind and above the pituitary, and it looks like a pine cone, which is why it's called that. And it's calcified again in a lot of adults, and it is responsible for a hormone known as melatonin, which is to do with the day-night cycle, although it is rather unclear what it does. And it was originally an extra eye which got buried inside your head when your head expanded, basically. So that's it for today. I'm sorry it was so long, but it is a big science video, so it needs to be quite long. And that's it for now. Goodbye.